I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to be on the show, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today's guest is Reed Davis, and he's founder of the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Certification Course. Reed, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. So happy to be here, Adam. Oh, man. So uh, I'm excited to have you here. You are truly one of the pioneers in your field, um, and we're going to get into that. I mean, you've got over 3,000 students, uh, 50 plus countries. I mean, you've been a busy, busy man. Um, but maybe just to get us get us kicked off, like, how did you go down this path of founding this course and just, you know, this health and nutrition thing in general? Like, how'd you get started with this? Yeah, well, thanks for asking. You know, I, back in the 90s, I was in environmental law. I was saving the planet, Adam, all the air, birds, water, trees, bees, you name it, uh, a conservation of, uh, of sorts. And um, I noticed how bad these things were treating the animals and air and birds and waters and things. Everything was dying around me. And I thought, well, gee, what's it doing to people and me? too, because I wanted to be in control of my own health, my own destiny, and I think that's what everyone should be able to do. So I started looking into uh, how can I work on people instead of just uh, the environment. And I went to work, this was amazing, because I went to work at a clinic where I went to run the place because I had all the business background and stuff. And uh, the owner said that I could go to her. She was getting her diplomat in nutrition. She's a doctor getting her diplomat in nutrition. She said that I could go to the classes with her and work on her patients in between. I thought, what an amazing opportunity. You know, I'm a learned freak, you know, a guy who likes to study things anyway. So, um, that's when I fell in love with the clinical side of the business. I was working on Mrs. Smith and Mr. Jones in between my classes with nutrition. And here's what amazed me and, and upset me and set me on the path for the rest of my life. I think, I hope um, almost everybody walking in the door, Adam had been to three or five or eight or even 10 different practitioners already. And I thought, what a ripoff, you know, like they weren't well yet. And they're desperately searching for someone they can come up with some answers on why they felt so bad. A lot have been told by their doctor, there's nothing wrong with you. Your blood work looks normal. So that's when I started learning. You know, I learned to run labs and look at the laboratory work. And uh, it took me years and years and years. But I discovered some patterns. I had some excellent mentorship, you know, alternative practitioners around the turn of the century. Um, a lot of them uh, were pioneers in their own right. But I did the work in the office. I ran thousands of labs on thousands of people and recognized some patterns. And then, of course, I was working on the protocols. And since I wasn't a doctor, I couldn't just write a prescription. And those people didn't want it. They've already had their fill of prescriptions and trying this and trying that. They're actually caught in that cycle of trial and error. So I figured a few things out while all that was going on. Again, working really hard, as we've talked about. So, you know... How long, how long was this, I guess you'd say apprenticeship period? Like how long did that last? Cause you said you ran thousands of trials. Cause I think this is something that's um, very unique about what you bring to your program and the medical side of things. So how long did this transition or this apprenticeship kind of last? Well, I worked in an office 10 years. Hmm. And so there was a progression. I mean, I started off just running a couple labs. I had my own de bone density testing uh, program. I was going out into the communities and doing, I was lecturing in the public just about what I'd learned in the nutrition courses and what I learned from the doctors in the offices. I was recruiting new customers to come, or you know, patients to come into the, the wellness center. I was running the wellness center, but at the same time, I was really trying to get into the, what was really wrong with these people. Like they were coming in for chiropractic or acupuncture, they had aches and pains, but they had all this other stuff going on too. And so it took me years to develop the program. Uh, again, running thousands of labs on thousands of people, you're going to make some observations of your own. Again, this is where some of these patterns came out. And I started realizing that for me as a non-physician, 
And, you know, I teach health coaches now. So as, as non-licensed practitioners, we're not supposed to identify one thing like a diagnosis and here's your treatment plan and good luck with that. You know, it's like, what's really wrong? I even had physicians, my, my friends who were coaching me up, say, Reed, you'd be glad you're not a doctor. You're going to have to figure out what's really wrong with people and then teach them how to fix it. And that was my job at the office. It was patient education. It was, it was telling people, look, it's not coming in the office that's going to make you well. It's what you do at home that's going to make you well. It's all the parts of our program that we teach now. So, so to answer your question, it, it took a long time and a lot of people, you know, yeah, it was amazing. Do you remember that point? So when you uh, obviously you're still working in that environment and that point where you were like, man, I, you know, I have something like I have something to offer. And, and to where when you started your program and you were like, what I'm doing is unique. Like this is like this can be, um, you know, this can not only change a lot of lives, but um, through me helping other people to learn how to do what I do like this can this can just be amazing and really create this movement, which you've done, by the way. I mean, do you remember that moment or what that transition looked like? I, do, I remember some parts uh, about it, like the uh, obviously, you know, I was having some success, early success. I had one lady and, and she had been to five or eight practitioners and she was uh, coming in our office for just for chiropractic. Now, I also did body work, myofascial therapy, and I would prep the patients for the chiropractor. And this one lady had been coming in for a while and she was she was really feeling down. And um, I said, what's wrong? She goes, well, I'm, I'm overweight. You know, this 40 pounds is killing me. I said, well, what are you doing about that? She goes, well, like, there's nothing I could do. I've been on this medication for two years because I get the hives. Mm. And uh, she goes, and I went to my doctor the other day and I said, I'm really tired of being overweight. You know, and, and he said, look, lady, you could either have the hives or be overweight. Take your pick. Again, just medication was the only solution he had for her. And she said to him, that's depressing. And he says, well, I can write your prescription for antidepressants if you'd like. And so I'm getting to the answer. And so I looked at her and said, well, have you ever tried to find out why you get the hives? And her head snapped around. I thought she wasn't going to need her chiropractic adjustment that day. You know, it really, and she goes, what, what do you mean? I said, well, we could run some tests to find out why you get the hives. And then if, you know, we could f figure that out, you wouldn't have to be on the medication and your life might go back to normal. And she was all in, of course. And within a very short period of time, just a couple of weeks, we had tested her. We had uh, found out she was sensitive to some, to some foods and some things in her environment, got those things out of her life. And she immediately got off her medication that had been making her fat. And her hives didn't even come back. She was taking hot showers. She was uh, working out to the point of perspiration, which she'd never done in two years because even on the medication she couldn't work out to a sweat and and take a hot shower so it completely changed her life and that was one of the moments when she just told me how happy she was and that she told her doctor i'm not taking that medication that was a moment er, very early on when i knew i was on to something by looking at lab this, these uh these alternative labs these, this way of looking at blood and saliva and urine and stool you know on people and figuring out what's really wrong and so I had a lot of moments like that with with adults, with children who I had a principal call me once and say, what did you put little Billy on? Because, he, you know, he, he had asked the mom, you know, who how did you get these miraculous changes in your child's behavior? You know, they had told him he's got ADD, he needs to be on medication. And so we did. We just ran some tests, figured out what was interfering with his nervous system, got that out of his life, and it changed his behavior like that. So I had moment after moment like that, Adam, that just completely changed my life, and it was part of the early process of knowing that I was on to something. So you know, I want to circle back to that concept that you said that you you were told at one point by whether it was by doctors or other peers that you should be happy that you're not a doctor. I want to go back into that that concept of because I know you have a doctor of the future concept of kind of the differences and where you see maybe some opportunity. Well, you know, that comes from a, a very famous quote by Thomas Edwards. Edison, who was an amazing inventor, wonderful person. Um, even the technology you and I are using right now probably started somewhere in his brain, you know, over 100 years ago, the idea of video and, and movies and all the things. Uh, great guy. But he said, 
and it's very often quoted that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patient in care of the human frame and in diet and nutrition and the cause of disease, cause and prevention of disease. And everyone quotes that, but he was wrong. Last year, over 55% of all Americans took at least one medication or are, are on one medication. The number of prescriptions filled last year was 4.15 billion prescriptions. So he's wrong about the dark of the future providing no medicine and interesting them in, in these things. Um, last year, there was over $500 billion spent on drugs just in the U.S. alone. So, you know, he's a great guy, great inventor, but he's wrong about that thing. The doctor of future is given plenty of medication, and yet it doesn't really fix what's, what's wrong. And that's the idea. The doctor of the future should be doing what, what Edison said, interest in care of the human frame and in diet and in your environment and these kind of things. So that's what we do. And it's being done now by health coaches. And health coaches is a new uh, movement, if you will. I'm one of the sort of founding fathers, if you will, I've been, I've been told, because I started my course in 2008. And so that's where that came from. And I think that we're onto something. Absolutely. And, that, and that, abs that, that definitely qualifies you. I mean, lots of students have been doing this well over a decade. I mean, you, you definitely are one of those founders. Um, I want to go into some of the, the methodology um, and, and what you teach. And then we'll talk about after that, we'll talk a little bit more about obviously the program and how you help health coaches. But I want to get into some of the methodologies and what makes you and your program unique or your approach. So let's just start with maybe your, one of your first um, philosophies. So tell us a little bit more about the hidden principle and what that means. Fantastic. Thanks. So remember that doctor, a good friend of mine still to this day, to over 20 years ago said, be glad you're not a doctor. You're going to have to find out what's actually wrong with people and then teach them how to fix it. So there's two parts of our protocol, if you will. One is the investigation. In the labs that I learned to run, this was a struggle. It took years to run thousands of labs and, th and come up with the main areas. And you said hidden. That stands for the areas we test. So it would be H-I-D-G-E-N, hormones, immune system, digestion and detoxification, energy production, and then nervous system balance. I actually got that part from my chiropractic friends about the parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, dominance uh, that people have. So the H-I-D-G-E-N, hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and the nervous system. And that's how we investigate. So we look at all of the factors that are, that are upstream causing the symptoms that are downstream. And I found out some really interesting things that um, if you look, first of all, if you look into those areas and then fix what's wrong with the protocols, which we could talk about, people just get better. Their symptoms go away. They, they often didn't even have a true disease process. But that, unfortunately, is not how modern medicine works still to this day. Most, most physicians and practitioners, even functional medicine practitioners, they hear the person's complaints, a cluster of symptoms usually, and say, oh, that sounds like something. It might, if it's depending on the symptoms, it might sound like a thyroid problem. It might sound like, oh, you have a parasite, you know, or it might sound like some other issue. And then they'll just test that one thing. Mm. and pat themselves on the back, I found your problem, and give you some, something to change the paper, something that's going to change the numbers, but not necessarily correct all of the upstream issues or dysfunctions or imbalances that are actually the true healing opportunities. And so we just work a different way. You know, we're not so concerned with the numbers on the paper as what's causing them. They're just the result of uh, the, the underlying causes. So um, our H-I-D-D-E-N, it's, it's, you know, there's no magic formula, but that's as close as I've found uh, to just, this is why you're having problems. And um, it does require an investment in running those labs. And so hidden, to answer your question, is, is about in the investigative part. You know, we always look into all those things. It's anything going on upstream. And those were just the common things I found. I came up with that through experience, making my own observations. 
And so now, obviously, I don't want to oversimplify this. And I know that there, uh, that you know, there's many, many different possibilities, symptoms, things. Obviously, um, diagnosis. I mean, that you know, infinitely complex there. But I do want to like. There's some people watching this right now that maybe they've never gone down this path of any type of functional medicine. And when you're when you're talking about things like tests and running tests, like they they kind of don't even know what that means. So maybe just walk us through a little bit of what that process of going down the hidden um, process, if you will, could look like for a particular patient. And again, understanding not all of them will be the same. Well. Yeah, sure. And it might sound like biting off a lot, but it's just what I found works. So typically people come to us and they've already been to a number of practitioners. They've even been told often that by their physician, nothing's wrong with them because they're doing these standard CBC blood chemistry panels and things, and everything could look normal. But people know that there's something wrong. So they would go down the street for the next thing and the next, I call it the cycle of trial and error. Mm. So what I found works is why don't we just look at your hormones, your immune system, your digestion, these things that could, they're very substantial functions in your body. And we'll look for the healing opportunities. Now that's not a diagnosis like a physician would give. Matter of fact, why would I diagnose one thing when there's all these other things going on? There's always an entire constellation of dysfunction when someone has health issues, there's always a combination of things. So to just label one thing and treat that piece of paper, it makes no sense to me. And so this is the kind of people who, who follow us. They go, yeah, I, I wanna know what's really wrong. And so to answer your question, uh, those are just the areas where, where we look at, and we use saliva testing for the hormones and uh, the circadian rhythm. And we can also look at all the sex hormones. We look at the stress hormones and the sex hormones through saliva. We use urine to help assess how well are you digesting food and breaking it down. That's as important as anything. You can eat all the great food in the world, but if you're not breaking it down and absorbing it, what, what good is it? You're not getting the, the nutrients, the, the amino acids, the vitamins, the minerals, the, the phytonutrients, the essential you know, trace elements. Of the, if you're not getting the good out of the food, it's not doing, you know, you could actually be starving. You could actually be malnourished as good of the food. So hormones and immune system, uh, you could have an overactive or underactive immune system. It needs to be, uh, looked at and then you know through lifestyle and things you can usually manage that you can you can boost it you can suppress it lots of things you do naturally without drugs so we'll use uh saliva testing we'll use urine testing we use stool testing a lot looking for the microbiome to make sure that you don't have too much uh good versus bad or too much bad bacteria versus good bacteria you know, we all have this microbiome there's also parasites and funguses and things we find these will really interfere with your health and then there's the other the other lab some are actually one one is a really good questionnaire you know to determine uh, the best food and diet and things like that. We don't have to do a lot of testing there except for food sensitivities. So we test everyone for food sensitivities because everyone has some. If you're eating those foods, they're disrupting the normal balance and things like that in your body. So it's just, you know, a series of tests, again, that look for the underlying causes and imbalances and dysfunctions upstream. And that's what functional medicine is supposed to be done. And one of the things I like about this the most, and why, why I asked you such a granular question is because I, I want people to, that are watching this to understand that this stuff is based in science. Like I've always, and this is, and again, not to talk down on doctors. I mean, doctors have their place. Okay. Functional medicine, medicine has its place. So these aren't, in my opinion, these aren't competing fields or theories or anything like that. They're just two different ways of treating things. And what I've always found so interesting is that when like talking about your process here, you're kind of trying to, you know, whittle down what could be wrong and looking at um, this, this, um, you know, why, you know, this functional side of why so a patient has experienced a certain symptoms or having like the hives, like you told, you said in a, a moment ago, like all these things, like all of the other doctors, like they're trained in a very certain way of prescribing medicine. So they're, they're, they're doing what they're trained to do and how they're trained to do it. I'm betting that at least that particular 
um, patient, which I don't know, but I'm betting they probably didn't go through all these series of tests because I've been to the doctors in my life for things like that. And I've never been asked to do anything around the line of a saliva test or this or that or whatever. Like if I've had an issue, it's always been a pretty quick consultation and this is what it is. And here goes your medicine. So I've always been, um, curious slash, um, I've always wondered why more people don't go down that path of thinking about if functional medicine can help them with what, the, what ails them. Um, any comment on that and why you've seen, because I know you, you, you live in that space and you've seen both sides. Like, why don't you think sure. more people really take, a little, take an extra moment or two to go down that functional, method, um, that functional side of medicine? Well, more and more are, obviously. Matter of fact, doctors are starting to look at hiring health coaches because mm -hmm. we get great results with people, not only on the positive psychology part, which is involved in changing your behavior. Uh, doctors, I think, are pretty cynical because a lot of prescriptions are right. People never take them. You know, they, just, they just don't want to take drugs. It's, mm -hmm. And that's the only solution they have. And so everyone's kind of throwing their hands up. But we're not trying to take a doctor's place at all, you know, uh, in, in emergent conditions. If there's a downward spiral in your health because something came along that kicked your butt, you need a physician's oversight in that. They can save your life. That's not the game we're playing, so to speak. That's not our backyard, if you will. But we can work around the edges of that thing, you know, with the diet and all of our protocols and things. So, so we look at what's really wrong. We try to uh, help repair, restore, rebuild, rebalance all of those things. Um, and if there is, and that's our backyard, uh, we use just basically lifestyle and behavior medicine, um, which we should talk about, but. But it's the, um, you know, it's just the backyard of a health coach to do that. And again, if the downward spiral of someone's disease process is so contracted or shortened, then the observations I make can't really be capitalized on. We, the body needs time to heal. So we do all the healing, which, by the way, the body is every cell has an intelligence in it that knows how to heal. We, we kind of start there. Um, but if you need medicine, go get medicine. A lot of the conditions we work with require medical oversight. So it's really a perfect complement mm -hmm. to functional or evidence-based medicine, what we do. And, uh, you know, we, we educate people thinking that if you, you know, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for the day, you teach him how to fish a person. Uh, then they're good for a lifetime. They're on a path. So they've just started incorporating all these lifestyle things in, and then they don't need physicians, hopefully. And if they do, like they get in a car accident or they get Ebola virus, you know, thank God there are, there are doctors. I, I like the way you said that. It's a compliment. So, I, and I agree with that completely. So I, just, I, I just wanted to make that <laughs> distinction for everybody watching. Uh, let's, uh, let's, yeah. let's, let's move on a bit. I want to, so we talked about hidden and what that means and how you're really, that's how you're, you're kind of looking to find what's hidden. Um, I mean, pretty straightforward. I, lo I love your acronym and it makes sense and it sticks with you. So now let's get into what happens on the dress side of things. So now that you maybe have some, you, you have an idea of what was hidden. Now it's time to kind of start working on things. So tell us a little bit more about the dress concept and how that works well the the challenge and, and i will I'll be glad to answer that the, the challenge was remember the, the 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 original advice i got gee reed be glad you're not a physician you're going to figure out what's actually wrong and then teach the person how to fix it so I can't diagnose or treat disease, have no interest in that. We'll be glad to hand over a complete monopoly of diagnosing and treating diseases to physicians. Whereas again, we look for healing opportunities and then a natural approach to healing. You start with the fact that the body's designed perfectly. Every cell in your body knows what its job is. You don't have to teach it a darn thing. Every cell, tissue, organ, system, the entire organism, there's an intelligence there. We work with that. We coach up function in, on the cellular and tissue level, on the organ level, on the system level, by using what turned out to be the DRESS, or Dress for Health Success System. And it begins with D, which is diet, which is what you eat. There's a right diet for you, Adam. It's probably not the exact same right diet for me. There's no one diet that's right for everybody. 
but there is a diet right for each individual. And we have a way of discovering what that is. You have to know the principles of uh, fuel and fueling the body and fueling the cells so that they can do their job effectively and efficiently without interference. So diet's critical. So that's the D in dress. Now R you can probably figure out is rest. Now, you know, people say sleep, but sleep and rest are two different things. You need restful sleep. And there's other ways to rest your body. You know, if you're depending on what you do for a living or, you know, what your activity levels are, you need to rest. Uh, everyone kind of knows about diet and rest. Well, the next E is obvious exercise. You can't be healthy if you don't exercise. You have to move your body to get it to work properly, to detoxify and all these other activities. And so you, you burn calories and things like that. So there's diet and rest and exercise. There's two S's stress reduction and supplementation on supplementation i don't own my own supplement company but i know a lot about them i know how to use them i know uh, how to figure out which ones would be best for a person how to completely individualize the supplement protocol but stress reduction is a huge area and because there's so much that will there's so many kinds of stress we're we're born under stress uh, we live under stress i've had medical doctors who specialize in certain conditions say that we are marinating in a toxic soup and if you remember my background i started in environmental law and cleaning up the planet and so i know a lot about the environment and what it does to the air birds water trees bees and so on and it's my whole journey in this field started with well what's it doing to us so stress reduction or stress management, if you want, is really huge. That could be just some foods you're eating. It could be the new furniture that just came in the house. It could be your household cleaning products. It could be your personal care products. It could be all this sort of physical outside stuff. It could be invisible stress, like electromagnetic frequencies and radiation and stuff like that. It could also be built up trauma. So we have this idea of, you know, like me, I've been in motorcycle accidents. I did jujitsu ju till I was well in my 60s. I surfed and I played football. So I've dinged up my body a lot. I have aches and pains and things that just need to be managed. That's very stressful to the body. So you got to take care of those little owies. And uh, so you got the environment, you've got your, your owies from physical trauma, and then your own body produces toxins. And, and as we've said, the, the, the food and water and the, is full of toxins and chemicals and things that aren't good for us. There's something like 80 plus thousand chemicals in the environment. And the degree that chemicals are being dumped in the environment, something like two or three 55 gallon drums per person per day. That's so much toxins being poured into the environment. So, you know, humans are very resilient. We're, we've got these miraculous bodies that have all this intelligence built in, in terms of uh, keeping things balanced and detoxifying and, and all that, but they're, they're still just only human, you know, and we can only take so much abuse, right? So not to mention, mental emotional stress the fact that we're watching tv and it's not all good news you know and uh and and you know unless it's sports then you know if your team's winning you're happy <laughs> but but uh but yeah so we have and we have relationships we have finances and we have um just other stuff and not to mention last but not least i think existential uh, uh angst you know not knowing not having a purpose in life and where you came from and and you know what what it's all about is very stressful Stressful. And people are just constantly concept shifting. So we have all this mental emotional stress, we have the physical aches and pains and trauma, bad posture and weakness, and we have the chemical uh, stressors all beaten down on us, you know, so you need a program that's going to uh, fight back in a sense, you know, if you want to be in control of your health, and your happiness, your life, you know, you know, you've got to take that control, you have got to learn. So that's what we do is we teach. So the dress program encompasses the things that would sort of fight back, you know, eating right and resting properly and exercising and reducing stress and all of those different forms. And then supplementation is important. Again, I don't own a supplement company or anything, but I know a lot about how they can be used to support certain systems or stimulate certain systems. I just flew last weekend to visit my 90 year old mom for Thanksgiving. And I, I was taking my immune boosters. 
because they help they actually work you know so you you got to know how to use supplements and um also food is very low quality you know there's not enough nutrition left in food it's not the food that my grandfather grew in his backyard when i was a kid it's it's not that quality so um we need to supplement some extra vitamins minerals a sense of fatty acids antioxidants and things like that so the d-r-e-s-s is diet the right one for you rest there's a program for you exercise there's a program for you. some people over and some people under exercise stress reduction is ubiquitous and huge and then supplementation can be a lot of fun and, and when you get it all clicking and you're firing all cylinders then you can then you can live a life and I don't know, become a health coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And so what, one of the themes as you, as you were going through just, just explaining dress and what it means is that everything seems to be pretty customized, right? So when you look at the hidden side of things, you're, you're, you're going through to see like specifically what's wrong. But then in the dress side of things, you're saying, you know, um, you know the diet that's right for you. Like, can you talk a little bit more? It doesn't have to be on the diet side, but it can just be in general, like on the on the idea of your your result or what your what your you know kind of prescribed. I don't know if I should use a different word, but what you're recommended to do um, is specific to you based on the data that you've gotten, because it's a, it's a different concept, sure. and I really want that to people to understand that this isn't like okay, here it goes, and then and then and then here do this this and this, and the last hundred people were told the same thing. Like it's different. It's that you're diagnosed to what you need to do specifically. Man, that's a great question. And we could talk a lot about that quickly. Um, physicians, you know, they're, I think one of the problems is that they deal with cohorts. You know, all the studies that have double blind, placebo controlled, randomized trials and things like that, they're based on cohorts. So they're, but a cohort never is sitting in front of you. An individual sits in front of you. And so you can't use data that apply to a cohort, to a person, one individual, that thing might kill them. If you've ever listened to a drug commercial, you know, on TV, you know that they go through, oh, la di da this and that, you know, and then, however, you know, all these different things may occur, including death. Uh, but then back to the happy scene, if you take this sort of medication, um, and that's because they're dealing with cohorts. You know, they could they can make the claims that they make because they've studied you know fifty thousand people or you know however many. Um, those that person's never sitting right in front of you. It's an individual with individual dietary needs and all these other things have to be totally specifically for one person. And sometimes that takes a little tweaking. This is again why health coaching is so important because it's a process. It's not just a here's your prescription, here's your dress program. It's here's a dress program that has reasonable expectations based on your history, your lab results, and the other factors we would we include. So here's a dress program, customized for you, that has reasonable expectations. There's no guarantees because we don't control the outcomes, but we can help manage that person through this process of discovery. You can dial the diet, you start here and you, you dial it in a little bit, the amount of protein or fat and these things might change. Same thing with the rest. A lot of times that's, that's the, often people's main complaint is I just don't sleep. So there's ways to, we do some testing on the circadian rhythm, you know, getting the melatonin levels and things and we figure it out, uh, figure out what's causing in that lack of sleep and then you know help a person modify their lifestyle so the coaching program is a huge part of it and uh i'll just say that there's no it, it has to be individualized and further than just individualized it has to be uh you have to navigate you know it's like sailing a ship i don't know if you've ever sailed but i grew up on the great lakes my dad had a big boat and uh there's wind in this in the air in the sails there's uh, currents in the water and there's waves slapping up against the hull of the ship and it's being pushed around and you have to zigzag. You know, there's no motor boating to health. It's, it's a, um, a matter of adjustments along the way, but you got to start with an individual plan and then you further individualize it based on the feedback we get from the body or the person and we tweak it. And so that's why it's a process. 
I want to go further into your, your actual health coaching program and how you're helping people become health coaches. So, I mean, you had, you've had over 2,000 students, again, 50 plus countries. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your program and also what you think makes a good health coach. Because there's some people watching this right now that they're like, you know, they, they, they get it. Some people are thinking about this from maybe the more functional side of maybe they have an ailment and they're, and they're thinking, you know, I need to figure this out. And I've never considered this. But there's also some people watching this that are like, hey, I want to do what Reed does. Like, if I can help people in this way, if I can um, make a difference in somebody's life, like, you know, you've obviously found your calling, Reed, and doing this and helping people. Um, there's some people watching that are maybe want to go down that path also in helping people. So tell us a little bit more about the program again, and, uh, and what you think makes a good health coach. I want to start, if you let me, you know, on, mm -hmm. on, you know, why I started teaching, because I was head of thriving practice, one of the busiest, it was just go back then, we just called it a nutrition practice. The word health coach didn't exist back then. Uh, there was personal coaching, executive coaching and things, but um, I had people just coming up to me at my lectures saying, you know, instead of just recruiting clients for yourself, Reed, you should be teaching other people to do what you do because no one's doing this. You know, no one has a system that you've developed. It took me 10 years to develop it, but still I was out there lecturing, you know, mostly to bring new customers or patients and clients into our offices. And I was just kept hearing it. You should be teaching. You should be teaching. And then one day a lab uh, owner called me up and he said, um, who the hell are you? You know, like, how can you run so many labs? Like how many doctors do you have working there in your, in your office? And I said, it was just me. I was the only one running these labs. He goes, what do you mean? He named some famous doctors who have five doctors working for them. He said, you as an individual do more than those offices that have five doctors who are using our lab. And I, it, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't, I didn't think any big deal of it. Um, I just said, okay, well, I guess I didn't know you can't do it. You know, <laughs> like, I'm just doing it. And, uh, and I love doing it. And, and uh, so he, he said, you should be teaching others, man, you could come and work for us, you know, and I didn't, wasn't looking for a job, but uh, he, he goes, you, you, what you're doing is amazing. So I put a course together and I taught a weekend workshop. I had 19 students, if you will, trainees, and they were mostly in the allied practitioner, health coach kind of kind of field. And um, they loved it. They thought it was the best thing they'd ever seen in, in their lives. So I, I just started, un, I did another class. Well, now we have over 3000 students. Of course, that was in 2008. And it's gone online. It's virtual. It's, it's digital. And um, mostly we're recruiting for that uh, health coaches they've already got maybe a bachelor's degree they've got um, some experience in the field maybe even another training program it could be just be something like they're a yoga instructor they're a nutritionist or they're a personal trainer there's someone that really likes helping other people so i'd say helping other people would be the number one uh precondition you know you got to like helping others and then the same thing with that demographic uh, they're into themselves, you know, they're on their own quest for health. So they're walking the talk. So number one, you got to want to help others. Number two, you got to walk the talk. You got to set an example. People aren't going to follow you if you're, you know, not in some kind of shape, right? Now you don't have to be perfect either. I don't want to scare people away who, who say, well, I've got all these health problems. As long as you're on the path, you know, or, or I look at it as a stairway where, where, you know, some people have a lot of steps to go and we help them with their steps. Now, I've still, after 20 years, got my own steps still to go. And I don't know anyone at the top of the stairs. And if they say they are, I could find you. Let me run some labs and I'll tell you how they're not quite there yet. They might be in great shape. And like I said, I just visited my nine-year-old mother. Uh, so genes have a little something to do with it. Um, she's just genetically really strong. And I hope I got those ones, <laughs> you know, from my parents. But um, so, so the person who likes our course or either that kind of allied practitioner, there's someone who's got a degree or some certificates and they're in the field already, or they're people with their own health challenge. 
and they just have worked so hard to try to overcome it. And they haven't done it through conventional means. You know, the doctors might have helped them a little bit, and that's good to get out of pain and, you know, control it somehow. But to really overcome it and get well and not need the medication and just be on your own with the lifestyle. So that's another big uh, avatar or, or demographic there. People have overcome their own health challenge. And so many of them come to us and sign up for the course just for that alone. I just want to go through the program and try to get well. And then they see that they could make a living doing it, you know, do this as a profession. So we have a whole professional development program too, as part of, you know, if you've never been in business and you don't know how to be a health coach, but you want to help others, you're willing to walk the talk and you've overcome your own health challenge, then you become a perfect uh, health coach, you know, cause you're willing to work hard and, and, and use the positive uh, aspects to help others. And then there's just the, there's also the, the physician who's sick and tired of the system that they're caught up in. So we have those three avatars. It would be, you know, the allied practitioner who's doing something along these lines. Um, then there's the person who just says overcome their own health challenges, wants to now go share it with the world and help others. And then we have people like doctors who want to work across state lines. You know, they're tired of all the rules, so to speak. Um, they're not all bad rules but they can help so many more people if they would learn how to be a good health counselor or coach and work across, you know, it removes all the geographic boundaries that they have. That's our three main uh, avatars, if you will. Well, Reed, uh, this has been awesome. I mean, I've learned so much through your hidden method, um, uh, through the dress principle, uh, also through, I mean, in name of the doctor, the future quote that you said. I mean, all, the, all these different things, the stats you've done. I mean, again, truly a founder in this whole health, health practitioner and health coach uh, um, field, and you're helping a lot of people. So this, is, this has really been great. Um, but Reed, if somebody's listening to this, and they want to learn more about your course or to follow your work. I mean, what's the best way for people to follow up and to connect with you and your team? Well, for the health coaching course, uh, it's functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com. I, I couldn't think of a longer name. <laughs> functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com for, for those that would be interested in the health coaching course. And I have to say, if someone is not really interested in becoming a uh, a health coach, just go to fdnthrive.com. FDN, which stands for Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, fdnthrive.com. That's our consumer facing platform where I have an army of FDN practitioners certified. They want to help. They're, they're walking the talk, they're, they're trained, and they're ready to help you at fdnthrive.com if you're just, let's say, a health consumer. Perfect. Well, Reed, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great work you're doing. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return viewer, return listener. So definitely do that. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on and love to keep this conversation going in the YouTube community. And Reed, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been awesome. Thanks so much, Adam. And you keep up your amazing work.